Well, hello, my sumo peeps. Yes, it's been a very long time, and I haven't made a tutorial or anything uh, kind of out of the video making thing. But somebody asked what my next one would be, so I thought I'll put together something very easy that anybody can do, and it will include a free giveaway. And what will that giveaway be? Well, you'll see. So let's get started. First, sumo paint, new image. Now you can just press on here, but what that gives, it automatically gives you an 800 by 600 resolution. I like mine a little bit bigger. So if you come up here, open from Sumo account. Oh, I guess I have to sign in. And actually, I don't want to open from Sumo account. I want to file new image. And rather than 800 by 600, let's go all the way up to 16 by 12. And so that fits on the screen. We can shrink, shrink it down to 60. And we'll start with that. So what are we going to do? Well. We're just going to make a simple image to start. So let's do a gradient for our background. If you're used to me, I always like the sort of greeny gold background. And let's start with that. And let's add some grass. And for fun, let's take this kind of blowing grass and do a little bit of scatter, a little bit of random rotate, and a little bit of space. And let's bump of our size to about there. And I don't know if I like this, but I'm going to go with it. We will sort of fix this a little later, but this sort of gives us something that looks like ground a little bit, I suppose. We can also, rather than do that scatter, just do random rotate, see if that changes it, thickens it up a bit, which it does. Let's take off the random rotate and add a little bit of scatter again. And I'm just kind of keeping my mouse button held down and just kind of going along trying to make something that looks a little bit like ground. Let's choose another grass brush. Let's take off scattering. Add a little space. And try another grass. Let's make this a little bit larger. I'm going to turn random rotate back on just to kind of thicken this up a bit. So I shouldn't have done that last stroke. Okay, so we have something that sort of looks like grass and ground. So let's go ahead and hue and saturation. Let's lighten it up slightly. Adjustments, hue and saturation and colorize. And let's turn that into a color that looks sort of like grass. Okay. And if we feel like it has too many holes in it, we can duplicate that layer. And we can random or rotate it uh, or flip horizontal. It sort of thickens it up a bit. Take the back layer and just raise it just so we get a little bit of a grassy look. layer down and I'm trying to think if I'd like that. Let's try stylize and boss, see if that makes it any more realistic or fakey. I don't think I like that, so we'll say cancel. Okay, so we have something that looks sort of like grass. If we want duplicate that layer and take the neck top layer, move it down a bit. Just to see if that gives us anything that's any more realistic looking. Well pretend it is. So I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. Okay, so now let's make another layer. Let's do a tree. Trees are easy here on Sumo. We'll take that nice bare tree. 
and I'll thicken this up to flow of 100%. I'll take this all the way up to 512. Oops, and we need to take off random rotate. And spacing dip back down. And obviously that's a little small, so I'll make it bigger. And let's move it down. Okay, so we have grass and a tree. What else should we do? Let's see. Let's make that tree a little bit more realistic. Hue and saturation. Let's line it up some. Okay. Adjustments, hue and saturation. And let's colorize that tree. More to a brown tone. Okay. Adjustments. Or layer. Layer effects. Bevel. Filters, stylize, and boss. Let's try and give it as much of a realistic or semi realistic texture as we can. Play with that angle just to see if it changes how it looks. Okay. And adjustments, hue and saturation. Let's make sure we bring it back to brown again. Or maybe a green. Green looks kind of nice on it. Let's kind of leave it like that because it looks like a combination of brown and green. Okay. And let's make another layer. And on this layer, let's do filters. Oh, noise, clouds, filters, noise, clouds again, just see if you have a pattern I like better, let's say I like that a little better. And, pre-transform, let's shrink that so that it really just covers the sky. Okay, and let's move that down. So it looks kind of like sky, but let's go ahead and put screen open. You know what, I should have made that a little bit more dramatic. Let's go adjustments levels. Let's bump up our black, bump up our white zone, bump up our black. I want it to look like clouds, or even something else. Okay, now let's put it on screen. Okay, so we might want to darken this background a little bit. Adjustments, hue, and saturation, just so that we see the clouds a little bit more. I'm taking our background layer, playing with the color, see if there's anything I like more, but there really isn't. So I just say darken it more. And see that line there? That bugs me, so I need to erase some of that. So we'll go eraser to airbrush number two. Take that down about 50, take that down about 50, and we're just going to kind of cut into that line a little bit. Oops, and I'm erasing the wrong thing, so let's go back. Let's go to this layer. Oops. Great, Sumo's frozen on me. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Okay, that's fine. So we have kind of an ominous looking sky and some grass and a, and a dying autumn tree. Now, for the real cool stuff. File import layer from my computer. This is what I'm going to be giving you. It's going to be in the back of the image. And go to desktop or have it. Firestock. Now, Firestock is how I do fire, at least in Sumo, just because it's, it's impossible to make a realistic looking fire in Sumo. So, Firestock is generally is a picture of fire um, with a black background. And this can be done in Sumo, or, or not in Sumo, in Photoshop and GIMP and some other. Um, photo editors, or it can be from an actual photo of fire, but it has to have a black background. Now the trick is, we want to we want to set this tree on fire basically, so we're going to take this fire stock and we're going to put it on screen. Now, as you can see, that hides all the black and just leaves our fire. See how we've just set that on fire? And we can duplicate that layer And 
We transform it. Duplicate layer. We transform it again. Well, I don't know if it's the computer or Zumo, but something's going really slow and screwy right now. Actually, I meant to do it this way. See how that looks. Okay, so that's basically it. That's all I really wanted to show you and give you a copy of this uh, Firestock. So you can do whatever you want to. Now this Firestock comes from somebody over on DeviantArt and all we need to do is mention that we're using it. And you can find more Firestocks over on DeviantArt. Um, let me show you where. This is from user random FTW random for the win. And I believe this person has some other Firestock images, but yeah, just uh, mention them if you happen to use their Firestock. And you can do all sorts of things. Like if you go to these link, people say use it here. And this is another nice thing to do is let people know when you've used their stock image. And you can see here they used it on the violin. It looks like it might even be a little up there in the moon. And I think that was a pretty cool one down here too. Oops. Well, I don't see where they used it there, but let's try another one. Used it here. Hey, right, see that? See what you can do? You know, you just really need to manipulate it and use it a lot, but you can turn it into um, some of these really cool images where people turn horses or lions or whatever into fire. So, all sorts of stuff you can do. Play with the um, the fire stock that I'm including in here and go get some more if you want. And you can make cool images like that. Actually, you can make much better than that. This is a very simple one that didn't take any time and was very easy to create. So anyway, have a good one. Bye.